Here's the reason that happens. Uh, when you lie on your back, your stomach is above the level of the esophagus. It's easy for the uh, sphincter to open and allow acid to flow backwards up into the throat. This is particularly true in back sleepers. If you lay on your right side, the same thing will be true. The stomach will be elevated above the level of the esophagus, making it easier for the stomach to uh, empty during a transient relaxation and let some acid up. Um, so again, we want to avoid uh, sleeping on your right. But when you sleep on your left side, um, the stomach is down below and gravity will help hold uh, stomach contents, stomach juices below the level of the esophagus, decreasing the risk of a transient relaxation and some reflux. Many, many people, when they come into the clinic, and the way you test this is during your oral peripheral examination, you have them turn their head all the way to the right and all the way to the left. You'll see that they have increased range of motion to the right because they're always sleeping on their left-hand side. It's very, very, very noticeable. But they'll have decreased range of motion when they turn their head to the left because they rarely ever sleep on their right. What happens is over time, the brain sort of selects for the right position to sleep in to avoid the reflux events. I've seen this in dozens and dozens of patients, or I tease them sometimes. I say, I bet you sleep on your left-hand side, don't you? And they say, how do you know that? Um, and it's because, again, this is sort of a, a built-in defense mechanism that the brain works out over time. This is a good time for us to now take a look at several good diagrams that will explain some of the disorders we've been talking about, give you a good visual. Uh, the first we're gonna look at here is a typical Zenker's diverticulum. It's the uh, last anatomical change that speech pathologists can actually diagnose um, because it occurs above the, uh, the um, cricopharyngeus muscle or the upper esophageal sphincter or the OUES, it has all those names. And we've talked a little bit about the structure of this, what makes up the musculature that supports the esophagus and how it's linked to the trachea as a way of uh, giving it stability. Uh, by definition, the um, area that we're most interested in is the superior constrictor, the middle constrictor, the inferior constrictor, and then the esophagus itself. These are, uh, these are, these are one of the most common diverticuli that we actually find. Patients typically come in with difficulty swallowing. They have terrible bad breath because there's rotting food present um, in these pockets. And uh, this other uh, diverticulum here is an esophageal or lateral diverticulum. And this is lower in the esophagus, usually in the, usually in the lower third. And both of these can be pulsion diverticulums, which means pressure builds up. Uh, the person's having trouble opening their cricopharyngeus muscle. It's become kind of leathery and difficult to open, kind of tonic. And finally, uh, Killian's triangle or Lammers triangle rupture and Zenker's diverticulum form. Zenker's the man who first identified these. So a lateral diverticulum can be the same problem. You might have lower esophageal stricturing. You might have um, the lower esophagus not opening for some reason, like echolasia. Um, and so there's constant pressure when the boluses are coming down through the esophagus, getting ready for going to the stomach. And finally, it herniates as well. Now, quickly want to mention that you can also have a traction lateral diverticulum, and that occurs when an outside structure, usually through scar tissue, pulls and grabs onto the esophagus and, and pulls and pulls, and finally a weakened area gives way, and so you can also have a lateral diverticulum from that problem. It is typical in patients who've had either uh, abdominal surgeries or lung surgeries. Uh, the most common case um, is someone who's had lobectomies for um, lung cancer. As the lung is healing, it, scar tissue forms, and because of its proximity to the esophagus, kind of grabs onto the esophagus, and as it continues to heal and pull, it sometimes gives way and the diverticulum develops. So there's traction diverticulums and pulsion. Pulsion is the most common. Globus sensation, uh, originally thought to be psychological. It's not. It's a feeling of foods. Uh, hanging up or slowing down or getting stuck in the throat. Just had a patient like this in the hospital, was in for um, respiratory problems after the chronic uh, problems we were having with the flu this year. And he became quite ill and was in the hospital and then had to have ventilation and a trach. Should have been no problems. Uh, did have a history of reflux, but uh, shouldn't have been no problems returning him to eating once everything was going well. So he was finally capped and 
He was breathing just fine. He was beginning his physical therapy. He was a little bit debilitated, but he, we, so we started him on full liquids, which is typical for me. I start them slowly so their stomachs can get used to food again. Um, and then we advance over the next couple of days until we're back up to a regular diet. As soon as I went to Mechanical Soft, um, he began to complain of globus sensation. And he said, Tom, I can just feel like it's sticking there. And, it, and he pointed to his lower uh, sternal area. And I believed him. And I said, well, let's finish today. And then tomorrow we'll, or we'll get another tray. And let's see if, you know, maybe it's just your esophagus and stomach getting used to having food again. It's used to having just liquids running in there. And um, nope, happened again. And I said, well, all right, I'll put you back down on full liquids for the weekend. And then we'll try again on Monday. Same problem. Um, so I went to the physician and said, I need an esophagram. I have a feeling this guy had some premorbid problem that has now reared its head. Either he had dysmotility before and he didn't notice it, or he had a stricture before and he didn't notice it. Uh, when you have strictures, sometimes they're asymptomatic because you're eating every day and you stretch it out naturally by the food that you eat. And sure enough, that's what it was. We found it immediately. It was a, that stricture probably had been there for a long time. It was just asymptomatic. Now, luckily, quickly dilated him. And as a matter of fact, he's going home next week and doing really well, eating just fine. It was like night and day. The next day he could eat with no problems of pain or discomfort. And uh, it's a, one of those real quick, easy cures, which is kind of fun to have.